Oh, what's up? Welcome back to Ringworm. If you saw last week's video, I was hoping that this week we could get uh, Tito and Sarah to come out, celebrate a little bit of highly belated Christmas, do some wacky things outdoors. I spent yesterday wrapping presents. I think Sarah's going to be here in about two hours, so we're going to do the transforming bed real quick. And we get flipped out once every month or two. Let's see, we move that. Factory goes on the floor. Couch has to move a couple inches. I gotta say, this is a pretty sweet design for such a little place to end up. I bet this is, yeah, I bet this is queen size. The only trick with one person is the legs. But you do like that, you grab one right there. So, being sort of Christmas, we got presents to open, we got lots of movies to watch. I found I have one more uh, cellular tra trail cam and I want to take it way back in the woods. Maybe Tito and Sarah and I will go for a hike and see if we can find a big fat game trail or an intersection of a couple, put it back there. Those cellular cams are just awesome. Even, I mean, if you leave here, you can watch everything, but you can also, you know, put a camera, well, I guess as long as there's cell coverage, you could put a camera miles away from you and anytime anything walks across it beep you can look at your phone if your phone has cell coverage it's been a whole bunch rainy and gloomy because it's uh you know early winter but there's not supposed to be any rain on the schedule for the whole time they're up here which is like three or four days i really want to get the uh 22s out do some shooting down at the shooting range oh and uh sarah was at sarah's house not too long ago she needed she said Need some kind of coat rack behind my door. I don't know if she was thinking, I think she was thinking like a stand on the ground one, but I was like, let's just rip up a board. We'll get the chainsaw out, make you a cool rack, use some uh, old sticks or something to stick out and hold your coats. The only issue is that it's behind her door, so her door would open into the coat rack and like, I don't know, break the window or something. So when I was there, I measured it all up. We're just going to have to have one stick that's a little longer than the rest. And then I 3D printed. This is um, TPU. Uh, it's like a rubber that you can 3D print with. I haven't used it a lot. Most of the 3D printing you guys have seen me do is uh, PLA, which is like the standard 3D printer filament. It's great because it's the easiest to work with. But this TPU, this is the first print. It came out perfect. So this is, we'll have a door stopper stick sticking out. This rubber cap can go on the end and then the door. Anyway, do you need to know all that? I don't know if you do. But we'll see. Maybe today we'll walk around, collect some dead sticks and make a cool coat rack. Oh yeah, you know one thing I wanted to check on, it's not that cold right now, the temperature hasn't been swinging too much in here, but you guys probably saw, sewed those uh, four sleds together, put them underneath this back bunk and put my water on it for showering and such. I did want to pull these out and see if the buckets are sweaty, if there's any water on those sleds. Would have been a little easier to get back here before I flipped that other side out. Nope, no water on them at all. Nice and cold, nice and chilly back here. But we definitely got room for another six or so back here. Perfect, really worked out. I've been hooked on this new podcast for almost a week straight. It's all I've listened to. It's called Science Versus. It's like a different topic every episode or I think it's every episode is a different topic. Can't get enough of it in my ear holes. I just got a text from Sarah. She's gonna be a couple more hours. So I'm gonna try to find a piece of wood for this uh, coat hanger. It would be nice in this one instance if I could find something dry. I guess we might have to go to my good lumber pile. There's some stuff that's been in there for, I don't know, six months or more. We're going to drill. I don't know how we're going to do this, but I'm thinking we'll drill out a hole. Make sure it fits that stick tightly, but when everything dries out and they change, you're probably just going to fall out. So see what, what dry stuff we can find. You know, something like this that's uh, a throwaway. The kind of thing I did the front of the man cave with. I got a bunch of those and they're more than a year old tarped over there. Yeah, there's a couple sticks in here that would be good enough too. I guess we'll just let her choose. That'd be good. That's four feet. Probably be cooler looking. More interesting if it was the outside of a log though. Let's see. Oh my gosh. I bet there I bet there's a zoo living underneath this thing. I haven't uncovered it in like a year. Keep an eye out for rats and squirrels and coyotes and mice. Yeah, there's some porcupine droppings there too. 
Sheesh, those got some stuff growing on them. All right, we'll just wait and let her pick them. Guess we might as well set up the last of these cameras. My brother got all these at a stellar deal, like these stands and everything. There's no way I would have bought these right off the store shelf or anything. I wouldn't spend that kind of money. These stands are pretty cool, but they only go up so high and they it's nice they got these uh, two ball heads on here. Presumably one for the camera, one for the solar panel. However, the solar panel plugs in right next to the tripod screw, which means you can't actually use this if you use the solar panel. I don't know if this is all made by the same company, but if it is, they didn't uh, do their research very well. So we're gonna have to take that one off of there. I like having trail cameras all over the place. It's just cool to see what's going on around you. But it is a pain when they run out of batteries, which in the winter they just don't last. So I'm definitely using the solar panel on this one if we're going to put it way out somewhere. What I really need to do is extend this thing out a little longer. If only I had, what do they call that? Not a castle nut, coupling nut or something? If I had one of those of the right size, then I could put a bolt in there, cut the bolt off and use the threads up taller. I don't have one, so for the time being, <laughs> I'm going to use, see so if half a nut in there, make it stay. I think it will for now. We'll just cut this off. I think this will work. It is the same brand. It's kind of cool. definitely precarious on there which shouldn't be a problem except <clears throat> almost every time I put a new camera up the first few pictures I get are deer faces licking it and sniffing it it's flashing is that a good sign technology is so amazing when it works and it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg is really sweet it always strikes me as funny, you know, you hear people doing this kind of thing. It's usually a young guy, takes off to the woods, I don't know, somewhere way out and always builds a log cabin. That's the way you do it. I'm totally down with that and I understand why people do it, but why not have the best of both worlds, you know? You can have uh, one bar of cell service too, and you can still listen to books and music and podcasts and occasionally get a trail cam to work. That's part of the reason these don't work that well. So I'm kind of limited on where I could put them. It's showing no cell service on this one, but I just got a picture, so it's right on the border. All right, now what do we do? We just need people to show up. You know, I was just thinking it might be a couple days before we uh, get out for a hike. I got a place I'd like to go set this. I tried putting one there before. Huge trail or uh, trail crossing, game trail, and also a log that the deer have to jump over. And I put it down there, but it showed zero cell service. However, they still seem to work with zero service. I say we go stick it down there for a night or two. Should we go? We, we got nothing else to do around here. Anybody seen my gloves? Tito doesn't know it, but right by his frozen in time cabin here is the biggest game trail. Looks like all the deers in the whole area empty out right here. See this nice highway coming through here? Oh yeah, it's all fresh prints too. Yeah, look how it just continues right through here. It's definitely a pretty nice highway. And there's our jumping log. Yeah, look at this spot right here. You can see where they land. Deep, deep prints there. Hopping over this is probably the same on the other side. Yep, this is a depression all chewed up there. Oh my gosh. Game trails everywhere. Well, it's only going to be here for a couple days and my gross sense here, so maybe they won't even come by this way, but we'll try it. Let's see, will it work without falling off? Oh yeah, we got it. We got it. Got it set on the lowest resolution, so we'll see if anything comes through. Psst. 
Shroom tube. Welcome to the worm, you creep. Shake it out. She's not a creep. How dare Welcome you? Welcome to Christmas. Oh, it's so warm again. It is. 64, a balmy 64 at that. Just got a text from Tito. Why are you so foggy? That's not what he said. I'm asking you. He said he thinks he might be getting sick, so this might be a two person holiday. We'll find out in the morning if he's coming. Ruby's favorite little house. Since uh, we're not doing anything the rest of the day and Tito might not come here, I think you should open a Christmas present. Oh. Well, it's being filmed, so that means it's not inappropriate. No, I actually don't think there are any inappropriate ones this year. Actually, there are two of them. I don't know what's inside them. Is it just like a t-shirt wrapped in a weird thing? Ah! <laughs> wow. Thank you. Oh, yeah. How'd you even find these? Were they at a store? Yep. Sarah, They're it socks. Sarah likes horror stuff, so you can wear it. You What'd should you call me? Horrible. <laughs> you should wear it. Different. I like horror stuff. You got plenty of time. You can like wear it. Pennywise the Clown from It. We've been, both been wanting to watch Oppenheimer so bad, but we wanted to watch it in here. And we can't roll down the movie theater until we've had some real food because that's covered in... Remember all the candy and popcorn and everything? So salads first. Salads and apples, then we can uh, pig out. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Oh. Hopefully it still works now that it's wow. dry. <laughs> it's beautiful. Right there. Six different kinds of shakers for your popcorn. But we're not allowed to touch it until we eat our salad. Okay. Uh, oh, it's working. Oh, do it. <laughs> Gotta get this salad done fast so I can eat popcorn and candy bars. <laughs> See if we can find the right popcorn jacket here. That looks like a popcorn jacket. Can't beat a couple bowls of uh, stairs popcorn. Which poison would you like here with your Coke? I would like the white sugar one. White sugar? Would you like some uh, popcorn oil? No, thank you. What? No, thank you. That's the whole point. I don't care for it. That's a good movie, but <laughs> no movie's that great without greasy popcorn and Coke. Well, it appears that Tito is drippy and sick, so he's not coming up. I'm trying to get up the guts to go outside. It's lightly snowing, but we need to make breakfast and then... Uh, do some building. You know, there's a chance you just have to open one more present. Actually, <laughs> what could it mean? That's gift number one. You're supposed oh. to open that one before all the rest, but things got messed up with the socks yesterday. I see. I see. It's an ugly Christmas sweater. It's not ugly. It's beautiful. It's Jack Skellington. Yay. Oh my God. I love it. I'm going to wear it all year round. I thought you'd probably want to wear it this weekend when you're sitting around here. And it's long, so I can wear it with leggings and it covers my butt. Oopsie. It has zero and everything. And skulls and, and Christmas skulls, trees. And skulls, I know. That's why I shrieked. When was the last time you drove a four-wheeler with an armful, well, armful of eggs? Tight. I guess I didn't need the four-wheeler to come over here to cook eggs, but I left it outside running so it felt like the thing to do. You know, you just do whatever you want on days like this. These names turned sort Weird. of white. I can never remember which varnish to use when I redo these. And apparently I picked the wrong one on that. Huh. Sorry, uh, Donald and uh, Ed and David. How are they cooked? There shouldn't be any jiggly whites mm -mm. for you. And the yolk is nice and runny. 
I don't like to leave a lot of smell, food smell out here in the woods, so I always wipe out my pan really well with paper towel or there's like egg liquid in there. I put it in an old uh, bar oil container and just throw it away eventually or whenever we have a campfire, I'll dump it in there as long as the fire is going to burn for a long time, burn up all that food liquid. So there's barely anything in this pan right now. And I don't do it right in camp, of course. But you don't want to end up with actual food on the ground. Like if you can see a single piece come out of a pan and you didn't wipe it out well enough before you washed it. I actually get pans completely clean with a very small amount of water. Like I could do these dishes right here six or eight times with a gallon. And you think, hey, that can't be clean. There's no grease, no chunks, no smell. Animals don't get into it, so it's clean. And all the used paper plates and bowls get saved in a paper bag in my giant trash can. And they get used for fire starters later. You want to do cedar limbs, like short cedar limbs, like pieces? Yeah. So you can just find any dead limbs up there that are about the right size, maybe like an inch or something, uh -huh. or a little bit bigger. Yeah. Why is this so fun? Because it's ringworm and everything's fun. <laughs> Just a little bit. Woo! Yeah. Now where do we go? I'm lost. Just this way. Rube, do you need some assistance? Yep. <laughs> there you go. I'm not saying today because clearly we've got our work cut out for us, but do you want to play Jenga tomorrow or something? Yeah. We are trying to get some limbs, dead limbs, from low down on the cedar trees because they'd be a lot drier and they wouldn't shrink up as much when we put this thing together. But there's been so much wet snow and rain and everything in the last month that even the ones low down are still pretty wet. So I think we're going to cut them up, take the bark off of them, and then put them on the microwave shelf in the cabin for maybe until the day she leaves or the day before she leaves and we'll put it together. It's not gonna get all the water out by any stretch, but it should help. Even if they end up loose and wiggly, like in six months or a year, we'll just uh, epoxy them in. I don't know how anybody doesn't have a sheath knife on them at all times. Yeah, but losers. I guess not everybody lives out here. My hands aren't big enough. <laughs> It's not easy with gloves on. And also, once you get it started, you just push get it your other down. hand on here, push the trigger all the way, and push the saw right up into the piece of wood, this okay. part, and then it won't vibrate so much. Okay. Nice work. Now we're getting into the swing of things. <laughs> it's fine if you cut the corner of the table off, too. I do that all the time. <laughs> So if this was a normal piece of lumber, it'd have straight edges on it. So if you want to make a square end, you have something to square off, but there's no edge. Mm -hmm. And we're not, I don't, are we going to cut these off or do you want the edge like this? I like a weird... So if we leave that edge, edge. we have to cut square ends on it. Mm -hmm. So what I do is cut the piece you want. So it's going to be four feet. So we'll just cut it a little long. Whoa, look at the snake skin. <gasps> wow, neato. Um, so what I do is cut it a little bit longer than you need. Mm -hmm. And then here, I'd snap a line down the middle. Like, just figure out whatever you oh, think so the you middle can... is, and then you can square off of that. Makes sense. I'll take the good piece out of the middle, something like that. Mm-hmm. So Aww. when there's weight on the end like that, it'll try Does to that... pinch the blade. So usually I do it However, just like you were doing when you get to the end, you just like zip it through there. Perfect. So all you can do here is just kind of guess on both ends what you think the center is. I'm going to say it's... Can't you just measure it real quick? Well, you can't see there's nothing to measure off. That's the problem. 
Oh. So we're going to guess, like if it twists around, you just have to kind of guess. We'll put a straight line down here, but guess at the center of that end. It doesn't have to be perfect. It'll be close enough. All right, let's put this on there. So all we need that for is to set this in here. Make a square. This is what like takes. I never would have thought to do it. Like you just, I don't know how you think of this stuff. <laughs> well, four years. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I've ever built with like clearly not chainsaw milled lumber with all the edges like this, but just like. You, you go, oh yeah, you just make the lumber and then you start building. It's like, wait a minute, there are no straight lines on anything. Yeah. You just kind of have to sort just it out. figure it out, line. yeah. All right, so now we've got a square four feet. So we can cut it again. Okay. That was a freaking great cut. That's Thanks. straighter than I make it. <laughs> <laughs> you can mark five and a half inches. That'll be the, where one stud is. We're gonna put the screws. Okay. Now the rest, all the studs are 16 on center, which means you should be able to go grab the tape measure. 16 inches would be the center of the next step. And they'll all be red on the tape measure. Cool. This guy is is just for countersinking, mm -hmm. which means the head of the like screw if you're doing, will be in it. You want to stop when it gets to that shoulder. So it needs to stop right when you hit this thing? It's just like that little that edge, angle. yep. Okay. A little bit more. A little bit more. That's pretty good. <laughs> so that should be the size of the head of the screw, which is pretty right. close. Okay. That's pretty good. I would have kept going and made it too deep. You did lovely. <laughs> Perfect. Do you feel I think it stopped? I got it. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to drill from both sides so we don't blow the other side out. By the time I do nine of them, I'll have it down. Yeah, have it. Next time you need <laughs> it, one of these, you'll be all set. Go. Oopsie. Oh, well, <laughs> that was a special one. I deserved it. <laughs> I don't know. I can't. It just seemed like I was deep enough. Ruby's just out running around at the <laughs> snowflakes. <laughs> she loves snow. Like, right. She loves it. Let's just finish those. That's it. <laughs> now she's like, what? <laughs> now you're self conscious, huh? Look at There's a nice doghouse right there made yeah. custom for you, and you right won't there. go in it. You no jerk. interest whatsoever. Zam it up. I think I sharpened that. Do you see how well that cut? Yeah. <laughs> Ready? Yep. Okay. Ooh, she was smoking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I hate to break the news to you, but uh, we can't do any hard labor tomorrow because we have to let our pegs dry for at least a day and a half. That's what it says in the book. Well, what a crying shame. Could you uh, microwave these for 36 hours for me? Sure. Thank you. Yep, no problem. I don't know how much moisture will come out in a day and a half, but I bet a little bit, like for these thinner pegs. It's 425, so... <laughs> time to stop this. <laughs> time for a group shower and then uh, <laughs> put the movie theater down and watch a couple movies. That'd be just swell. That'd be just swell, yo. <laughs> we had a pretty fun time watching uh, Interstellar last night. We've both seen it before, but it was amazing. It was it's so such good. a great movie. It's a real thinker. Yeah. And if you haven't seen it or you want to see it again, Got to watch the Arvin Ash is a YouTube channel. I think he's a physicist. What was it called? Black holes. Something. Well, he explains kind of how black holes work, which is helpful because there's a part in the movie, spoiler alert, where he goes in a black hole. And a lot of the things you see in the movie are kind of explained like 
It was the physicsiest Hollywood movie I've ever seen. But it they was use, but, amazing. But they use like real science, so like it's not just made up. Yeah. Bull. Like they use like actual quantum physics and stuff, so that it's like a semi-realistic. It's really I interesting. wonder if any most normal people would get as much out of it as we did, not being like totally physics geeked nerds. out on <laughs> physics and. Astronomy I mean, it's and... still, yeah, because it's so visually stunning. Yeah, it's like just a the, great movie anyway. The, it, it's on rad. Prime for free. So we just had uh, breakfast again, and we were just about to go down to the shooting range and play Jenga, which hasn't been touched since party week, but we're both a little chilly from standing outside, so we're going to walk down to Tito's cabin and grab that trail cam because there really isn't... I, I knew that. I think I said that. There is not cell service down there, so it hasn't been working for two, two days. So we're going to grab it and walk somewhere back in the woods and see if we can find a good place to plant it and warm up a little bit. Ruby gets a free ride through the mud. Right, Rube? Princess and she knows because she'll she'll just stop, stand there and wait. <laughs> Excuse me. Tito's invisible cabin. I guess we're going to walk through. There's a chance that no deer has come through here in two days, but we'll find out if it takes a picture of us. Mm -hmm. I think the deers and coyotes and coons and stuff go to this pond. We'll have to look and see if we can find a good game trail going up to it. Animals have been through here. We got it set up right there. And you're getting your picture taken right now. Marco, that's not what you're supposed to say. Oh, there she is. Oh, so nice back here. So quiet. <laughs> there she goes. Go ahead. You know the way. You're a dog. Go ahead. Good girl. <laughs> we'll, we'll meet you there. We'll catch up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> Shoot for a minute, then have a snack, then uh, go take a nap or something. Get a shower and then... What a great day. It's been a while. Yeah, there's there's definitely a good size uh, mouse nest in this. Hey, I suppose it could still be in the box. If you want to see the video of inventing 22 Jenga, I'll put a link here. Alaskan milled up a cedar tree into boards, ripped them, and then what did we do? I think we might have fed it through the big planer to square them up. And just ripped them with a circular saw and then sanded all the edges. And the cool thing is we use really weak ammo, like this ammo with uh, basically no powder in it. It's just enough to pop the blocks out but not destroy them so you can reuse them. You didn't see the Jenga videos before. The whole idea with this and is to get out. you're hugely missing out, but it's on a turntable because you don't want to walk all the way around the shooting range to get the right shot. So you can just go and twist the whole tower a little bit and get just the right angle. And always shooting into the hillside. Okay, I got it. Okay. <laughs> oh, you know, I gotta say something for the camera. She is unreasonably good at shooting. Remember right here before this, it was actually maybe even this tree. We came down here and I like shot the a... first year. It's like, you want to shoot a playing card on edge? Oh, we'll try. First shot. That was just Split a fluke. It. Yeah, except I couldn't do it fluke. ever again. Everything's a fluke with this girl. <laughs> wow. Did you glue these all together? <laughs> Unreasonably good. <laughs> you know, good at something? You're damn good at this. Okay, I'm gonna survive the zombie apocalypse. As long as you get a pea shooter and some silent ammo, you'll be fine. <laughs> Stop or I'll nick your shoulder like a baby. Nice. Yeah. 
Whoa, that was crazy low. What the heck was that about? And still low, but it didn't fall over. Whoa. Dude, there's no way that's gonna come out of there now because the other ones are so bulged out. So, I don't know how this just happened, but I was aiming for this one. I hit that one twice, and then I hit that one. And the problem is, now this block is like bulged out, and this one is, so it's like pinning this. That doesn't want to move at all, but the rules of the game is you got to keep shooting until it comes out or it falls over. Oh, oh nice! It didn't wow! Fall. Shooting on this side. Oh, wow. Just gonna spin slowly. <laughs> Does that count as falling? Should we keep? Let's keep shooting at it. Okay, we'll keep shooting. At it. <laughs> Still standing. Still standing. <laughs> I saw Got one it. jump off the top. I don't know what that means though. Definitive. We got a few more of the powderless 22s left, so we're gonna do a little speed shooting. Should we? Well, you got six rounds, so yeah. let's see if we can shoot all five. You get to miss once and see how fast you can do it. Say beep. Beep. Oh, I'm not good at cocking this. Oh, I hit it. Nice. You did it. <laughs> I hit them all. What was my time? I um, I, seven and a half point three seconds. Seven and a half point three. That's pretty good. Yeah. All right, see if you can beat seven and a half point three. Oh, okay. Beep. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Slow cock to start. <laughs> yep. Let bite your thumb off. Just missing one, I forgot. Oh, <laughs> I guess I shot one at Jenga on my full. Oh, you gotta buy. All right, one more time. It's been so long since I shot this 22 revolver that I actually forgot how to do it. I was just telling Sarah, you, if you're just shooting one shot, when you bring it up, you cock it with your right hand to pull the trigger. If you're doing more than one after the first shot, then use your left hand to cock it, because then you don't have to work your thumb around and get off target every time. So. I think I can beat seven and a half point three seconds. Beep. Oh, did I get that one? Four point thirty two seconds. Yeah, that's the world Way record. Less <laughs> Beep. <laughs> Not into the fast thing. <laughs> Okay, let's go eat. This is really the life. We've been sustaining ourselves each morning till 11 or 12 with just coffee. Then you should go out and cook some breakfast, but it's granola this morning because my mom gave me several really good beef tenderloins left over from Christmas dinner, and I think they're still frozen. We'll pull them up pretty quick, but we're gonna start a fire and have those for uh, dinner. It's not really that fun to have a fire way after dark when it's been dark for three hours and you're freezing cold, so it'll make a really good lunch. Watched uh, Apocalypse Now last night, which I've seen a bunch of times, but it blew me away how good it is for 1979. It's just a, God, what a great way to spend life. It's been about 48 hours, right, or something? Mm -hmm. Two days ago we put these on here, they been cooking. They do sound completely different than they did. Let's see if the water content was like over 25% when we started. It doesn't even register. 
Wow. I don't think I've ever seen that. Them are dry. We've used an impressive amount of power in the last two days, two and a half days. Can't believe it. We almost used an entire Jackery. My speaker's almost dead. That's usually uh, seven, eight, nine days worth of power <laughs> just from ripping music, uh, movies really loud. My nephew, uh, Grunt, Grant, uh, got me these for Christmas. Never really seen them before. Battery powered hand warmers. Pretty sweet, rechargeable. what I always need is somebody to do the holding <laughs> and the trigger pulling. All right, go for it. Switch. If you do it on the bottom, it'll throw stuff that way. I'm trying to find things to do. Waiting for the uh, wood glue to warm up inside the cabin. I'm just going to glue these in and then we're just about done with it. And it's about time for Christmas dinner, but we don't have enough coals yet. So we're kind of stuck. It wasn't a very hot fire since everything out here was wet and frozen. Let's see if we could find those steaks and see if they're still froze after all these days. Actually, we put the coolers inside last night just for the night because it was down in the teens. Maybe that was enough to unfroze them. Well, I think they're thawed all the way through. Oh, and Tito's not here, so we get one and a half a piece. Still told Sarah I can make the hash browns with gravy. I've got good packets of powdered gravy that I actually love. But the problem is until I get the kitchen finished, I only have one burner out here. And when it's really cold, if you have to cook two different dishes, cook one, take it off, and it'll freeze like the gravy would freeze by the time the hash browns were done. So uh, when the kitchen's done, we'll have two burners. Maybe we'll even make some kind of cool warmer. Oh, it'll have the uh, outdoor uh, wood stove there too. So you could use that to keep, what do you call that? Like a, to keep your food warm. It's like a griddle looking thing that fancy people use. I'm not fancy, so I don't know what you're talking about. Oh yeah, she would have no <laughs> we could make a Thanksgiving dinner or something out here when the kitchen's done because we'll have the top of the wood stove to keep our food warm. And we could probably even bake stuff in it or cook on top of it. That'd be really fun to do a big dinner. I'd like to do Thanksgiving one yeah. time and cook all the stuff. The stuff, that's how much I know about cooking Thanksgiving. Is it this just good stuff to eat? Food, it's called food. Oh, food, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the meat, Mom. You even pre-seasoned it for us. I'm gonna put a little extra garlic if you don't mind. A lot of extra garlic. Ooh. It's gonna be a bunch of ashes in our hash brown, but that's all right, right? They're sterile. A little Christmas wine for the masses. Nice. Just barely enough coals to warm those up. I don't know if this is going to cook it or not. I guess we can always throw it in the pan if we have to. Not enough coals, we gave up. <laughs> Something tells me that'll be just fine though. Pretty rare. Look at the crisp on that thing. Oh, yeah. Ooh. It's going to be so good. So is it uh, two for me, one for you? Is that how it goes? Excuse me? Just kidding. <laughs> that looks like a good one here. Oh, yeah. Oh, Lord Lordy B. You know she's cold. 
He's not getting up to even look at the food. Ah. Uh. Mm. Mm-hmm. Happy Christmas so long ago. Mm-hmm. Let's give the steak a little taste. Oh. It's so good. You gotta do good steaks in a pan, it turns out. Mm -hmm. Just to get that crisp, especially because you can crisp it on all sides. Mm-hmm. Wow. That is tremendous. Yes, it is. This fine restaurant also has top-of-the-line steak knives. The Goblin Chopper 1100-SP. <laughs> <laughs> I should also show the folks our centerpiece. This is what happens to the dirt out here as the ground freezes. It's like underneath this, it's the ground's still wet. So I think it gets little spikes of ice. The ice grows up and then it keeps taking water from the ground and freezing it. You get these wild looking things. I don't know why I'm showing people that. I'm sure this is how everybody does Christmas dinner. <laughs> I always have my dirt ice sculpture as a centerpiece. <laughs> Where did you find these? I can't tell you. I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. Jason and Freddy socks to go with my it socks. <laughs> I don't know if you do. You know that I have like a sock problem. N no. Because you're feeding my addiction, and I love it. Oh, she loves Thank the socks. You. The only person ever that liked getting socks for Christmas. I feel like you just always oh. have one pair. Of I know, and I and freaking like, hate these. They're too short. It makes me crazy. You, Sarah. And derpendents, dependent and de <laughs> dependence. Got it. This small M is good for one semester of dog training classes at your local kennel club. M. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Oh. I have no idea why it's an M, but if you lose the M, the, the, then it's, it's off. No the deal's anymore. off. Yeah, okay. Save that M. <laughs> All right, we made it through the last of Christmas. You did good. We did real good. Yep. Let's put the theater down. All right. I was thinking this morning that there's never a point when I moved out here that I ever thought I would be spending three or four days like what we're doing and loving it. <laughs> I never would have thought I'd be I'd have like a movie theater out here. <laughs> when it was just a tent in the mud right over yeah, well, where the saw horses are. Yeah. Well we got up our wood glue, we warmed it up and it was all solidified, the whole jug, so these are just gonna fit. Wow, we do not need glue. This is absolutely perfect. Just testing the rest okay. of yours. The 3D printed rubber cap. Perfect. Perfect. Nice door stop. Yeah. That is a hanger if I ever saw one. This one looks a little funny. <laughs> the only thing we didn't do is when this, these outside pieces like this, there's so much water in the, this part of the wood. Uh -huh. Like the top of this is sticking up uh -huh. so it doesn't go quite against the wall. Let's see how flat it'll be. Like you'll have a gap here. We could just run the planer over it real quick so it wouldn't do this. Over like, yeah. I said this is cupped. I think that's what it's called. Like warped is end to end. Oh. This is cut, but it's opposite of a cup. You know, holds water. Yeah, because it's. I wonder what they call it. Pooched. Sure. It's pooched. Ruby, that's not where you're supposed to sit. Well, I put it there. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Look, everybody! I know you're so sick of watching Ryan build stuff all the time, so now you finally get to see me make something all by myself. Well, I I no, did it I did all that. 
by myself. You didn't do that part. I, I made this by myself. You're going to tell me all you, alone. When Isn't did you use great? the 3D printer? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made the wooden Plus, part I did all the other by myself. I did most of it. Okay, well, we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Peace. Happy Christmas. Belated. <laughs>